you doing, sir? Good. Shotguns. Shot lots of these back in my day. Well, if you need help with anything, let me know. Thank you. Nice. That's smooth. That's a smooth gun. Hello, sir. I would like for you to buy, uh, uh, okay, yeah, to, to buy that gun, please. Okay. Um, do you have an ID on you? Yes. I'm going to need to see that. Make 11. Uh-huh. From Hawaii. Uh-huh. Okay, let me, uh, Paul, you want to look at this? Your organ doing it. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. I just like helping people. You ever, uh, you ever bought any guns before? Oh, yeah. Tons of guns. Yeah, fill down a background check and stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. Awesome. Let me get you some paperwork and, uh, that looks legit. Of course. Go ahead and get you rolling, okay? Give us a few minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, man. It's going to be a thousand bucks even. Okay. Yep. I got that right. Here. Should have given you your ID back. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, man. Here you go. Um, uh, there you go. Well, uh, I guess this worked. Don't forget your ID. Oh, yeah. Thank it's you. important, right? Thank you. Be safe. Take care. Thank you for your purchase, sir. Enjoy. Thank you. This is great. Sold him a chocolate in 1911. Oh, nice. Hey, Demolition. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. My favorite series of shirts we've ever done started off with the thick shirt with the M249 saw, and then we went to the Butterface shirt, and then we went to the exotic shirt, and then we made a dirty shirt, and they are the best series of shirts, and you can only get them right when we launch them. We never bring them back, but you're in luck. We just came out with a brand new one. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Shouty shirt. Woo! It's the best one we've ever done. It's only available for a limited time only, and we're doing a two-week pre-sale on it. Link in the description below. Seriously, it's the best shirt ever. If you don't get this, you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life. You'll be sitting on your deathbed being like, man, I wish I would've got that shouty shirt. I love you. Oh, I thought it was a contact. It wasn't, it was just a butterfly. Hey, welcome to Demolition Ranch. My name is Matt, I'm glad that you're here. I have a brand new gun. This is a kel KSG Tactical. And you might've heard of KSG. You might not have heard of this. It's the brand new one, very cool. A little bit different. Come look at these. I actually don't know if it's brand new or not. I said that and then I started thinking maybe maybe it's not. It's newer. It's newish. So this is the KSG Tactical right here. Next to it is the KSG 25. The KSG, the one that's only designated as a KSG, is about in between these. It's about this long. And the beauty of the KSG is they are bullpup shotguns with two mag tubes. So you can see underneath here they have two different mag tubes. So this one is the KSG 25, which means it holds 12 rounds, which is bananas, 12 rounds in each mag tube. There are 12 rounds there, and then it can hold one in the chamber, meaning it can hold 25 rounds. The KSG has a little less. The KSG Tactical holds even less than that, but it still has two mag tubes. You can see it really good on the end. There's your barrel. There are your two mag tubes, and it has double mag tubes, bullpup you have this thing which is a tiny little shotgun 12 gauge power and it holds five in each tube so 10 in the tubes one in the chamber has 11 rounds on tap in a very small little compact cqb tactical shotgun and we're going to run it today and see how it does also 
I have out here the other variant of the KSG. This is called the KS7. So this is their single mag tube version. You can see it looks just like a regular shotgun with a mag tube underneath the barrel, but it is also a bullpup, so it can hold a lot of rounds, little extra rounds without being extra long. So your grandpa's old Remington shotgun that he hunts birds with probably holds two rounds and one in the chamber. You got three rounds there. And then you get like a Benelli M4 and you get more rounds because it has a longer mag tube. And you get one of these things and they can just carry so many rounds because they're bullpup and they have double mag tubes. The KSGs are pretty cool. Let's uh, go see what we're shooting at today. We are doing another homemade body armor test and this homemade body armor again was made by you guys. We're calling this segment the Nerd Alert Homemade Body Armor. Last time was Redneck Ingenuity. Today, we brought in the scientists. We brought in the nerds, the guys with the big brains who can make some good armor. Let me show you what we have here. Up first is this one. Uh, you can tell this guy is uh, pretty smart. So this is from Adam M and this is the plate. It says, shoot this side, and on the back side, it tells all what is in here. This is the back of the plate. Order the plate back to front. So first we have a PLA spacer. He even has all the uh, dimensions on how thick each plate is. So this one is 0.03 inches thick. So a PLA spacer, um, and this is going back to front. So I'm actually gonna read it the other way. I'm gonna read it front to back so we know what it'll hit first. So first it hits Tyvar 88, U-H-M-W-P-E. It is, uh, has 0.125 inch floatins within a mix of both non-Newtonian fluids. His Newtonian fluids, he has fluid one is corn syrup, gelled, and fluid two is oobleck. So in here, he has, and I'll show you, he has several super thin layers of non-Newtonian fluid. So after that Tyvar 88, it hits a 0.1 inch non-Newtonian fluid number two, oobleck, and then it hits a 0.125 inch AR500 plate. That's crazy. So he has, AR500 is what they make I mean, that's what these targets are made out of out here, but they're all a quarter inch thick. This is super thin, 0.125 inch AR500 plate. Then he has 0.1 inch of corn syrup. Then he has 0.125 inch of AR500 plate. Then he has a 0.1 inch of corn syrup again. Then he has a 0.02 inch spacer. And then he has 0.25 inch Kevlar plate. And then he has another spacer. So this dude really thought through. He has the hard stuff up front. He has several layers of non-Newtonian fluids. He has several layers of metal plate, and then he has Kevlar in the back, plus another non-Newtonian fluid. I'm interested to see where this goes. It is, man, probably it's almost two inches thick. It actually could stop a lot. We'll find out. Let me show you the next plate. Next up, Samuel Haller. This is this one as well as this. Samuel is a fiber technician and he said he got this idea because he's a fiber technician, network engineer by trade, and he works in a lot of remote fiber huts. And he said these are usually way out in the boonies. Um, they're all alone, they're secured behind a gate. He said it would be a good place to go if the world, you know, if the government collapsed, the economy collapsed and everything, there's, you know, it's lawless lands. He said he'd go here and hide out. And if he was there, he'd have all these materials that he could make body armor with and he was wondering how good it would work. So this actually is pretty smart, the stuff that he did. Um, and what's in here, these are actually both very similar even though they look really different because this one has fiber optic wires wrapped around it. So this fiber wire is wrapped around it. Um, and basically what he has in each one is a metal plate. This one is a, That's a strike against that plate. We'll get to that one in a minute. This one is a regular steel plate. It is not hardened steel. So that's why he says, as is steel on this one. But this one has fiber cables around it. And he said the fiber cables are woven with Kevlar. So they have little fiber optic cables inside there, woven with Kevlar and then covered in this rubber. And then also he has putty in here to absorb impacts between the plates. So the difference between this one is he actually heated up the metal plates in this one. He heated up in a campfire and then he quenched them to make them hardened steel metal plates. So he actually is hoping that one of these or both of them could be level three, which means it'll stop at 308, or even possibly higher level. He is aiming for rifle rated. Actually, you can see the plates right there. So he has those three plates. These are all hardened steel now because he quenched them. And then this one, I assume, has three plates as well, but they are unhardened. So he's aiming for with one of these to get to at least a level three plate, which is cool because last time we did anything, we did not get any rifle rounds to stop. So maybe today we'll have some rifles actually 
stopping on some of these plates. Next up, uh, this is from Jackson from Flagstaff, Arizona. And this one actually looks pretty cool. I mean, it's got a curvature like a plate you would actually pay a lot of money for, but it looks like the homemade version. So it is cool. And he said it looked really cool before he wrapped it. He just kind of wanted it to not delaminate. So he wrapped it in this, glued it all together. This is, uh, he had a big process on this one as well. He says, our plate is made of 90 layers of plain weave aerospace carbon fiber. It is about three quarters of an inch thick and was wrapped in canvas to help hold it together after impact. So what I like about all of these plates today is they're all pretty normal size. They're not, you know, this thick or something because you can stop a lot the thicker you go, but it needs to be realistic because, you know, we're trying to like see what you'd actually run around with if you needed to actually use body armor. We layer the carbon fiber sheets on an AR500 steel plate. I don't know how thick that plate is, but he does have AR500 steel to give us the curve and shooters cuts. Then I baked it in an autoclave to apply heat and pressure to form a solid epoxy plate. Now, baking AR500 in an autoclave actually may anneal this plate. We'll see. So those are our three fan submissions. And just like last time, we are going to be choosing a winner today. And it's not necessarily the best at stopping. It might be, but it's also just the one I like the most. And we are going to send you a Crimson Trace Rad Micro Pro Red Dot and a Bunker Swag Box to the winner. That's what you boys are competing for today. It's gonna be good. So you can see the two mag tubes right there. I think you can see that. I can see it. And it has this little switch here. And so that is so you can pick which tube is running. And I think if you have it in the middle, it switches between the two. It just goes back and forth. So that's in case you are like, I want to shoot slugs right now, or I want to shoot beanbag rounds right now or something. Uh, it's so if you have different rounds, you can kind of pick which ones. But each tube, like I said, holds five. We're going to load it up real quick and let it rock and see how this thing shoots. I have not shot this yet. I do actually very much enjoy my KSG 25. So I assume this one's going to be pretty sweet. I saw this the other day in a gun store and was like, yep, I need to get me a KSG tactical. All right, so that's full. So we'll go ahead and load one in the chamber. And now I can go ahead and fill that one. So I have 11 rounds in the shotgun right now. And ideally this sight is sighted in, but we're just shooting shotgun, so it probably doesn't matter. Let's see where this goes. Oh! Oh, I shot too high. Oh, I'm missing. Oh. oh, I kicked this thing over to the wrong side. I thought it was in the middle. So it was only emptying one side right there. <laughs> Dude, that thing packs a lot of hate. This is, a, let's just fill it up again. I think it actually does not switch. I thought you could put it in the middle and it would just switch between them. I think you have to pick your tube. You empty chamber plus five out of one side and then you manually flip it over and go to the other side. I'm pretty sure. One more. No, oh, I was trying to get both of them. And then you switch. Yeah, you see how much harder a shotgun hits than a nine millimeter because those things fly over. You can hit two of them at one time. I like this thing. I guess we should probably start shooting on our guys. We're gonna shoot the green target first and we're shooting with just two and three quarter inch 12 gauge bird shot rounds. Try to do a nice, perfect shot. His head fell off. Now we're going the black one that is protecting the family jewels. Now the yellow one. And last but not least, the white crotch protector. I actually was real pumped that they hadn't fallen down the whole time. <laughs> they just all fell. Solid hit. Lots of beat. Wow, they're all like stopped in the front layer. I can feel BBs all right here. Um, nothing went through that one. Not surprised. This one, solid hit. And you can see BBs stuck on the front of this one as well. Nothing. Not surprised. 
and this one looks like we have hits all over can't tell though on here but nothing came through he is protected you can see on his torso he's got holes here holes here holes here but nothing underneath that plate and then hit on the front of there doesn't look like anything came through there and he is protected under here good to go it's time to move it up to something a little stronger next up we are going to be doing these one ounce slugs high brass 12 gauge shotgun shells i still think that these will stop them but how much will this tear them up that's the real question we're gonna do green first just like last time dude those hit so hard and now we're gonna go at the black one jeez And yellow. And white. Ow. Those things hurt. <laughs> what do we have here? Oh man, that thing went deep. Yeah, that went through. <laughs> it came out here. That is a new hole there. Came through that. Um, but not a whole slug. It came out in little pieces. So, let's see if I can clear out. Yeah, so you can see his Kevlar one, and that stuff is sharp. He told me, be careful, it'll be really sharp once it's broken. But, yeah, that slug ripped right through your metal and your Kevlar. And, this. and the thing is, if it won't stop a slug, there's your complete hole straight through it. If it won't stop a slug, it definitely won't stop a rifle round. That was pretty tough. It would stop pistol. We should have tried pistol first, but I thought slug was probably a better idea. It probably stop a pistol, but rifle definitely would not stop. Dude, this one got messed up. Crazy. So this went in and then came out the top. That's the wad right there. The plastic wad rides behind the big lead slug. So it went in and then exploded out the, I don't know if this actually was the top. I think that was the top. So shot stuff straight at his face, basically. And Let's cut this tape and see what it looks like in here. So there's all his layers. That is pretty cool. Um, it did stop. It did not go in him. So that is a, that's a pass, but it, it went pretty deep. That's a rough one. That one moves on. This one's out. And yellow, we got a nice bulge here, but did not go through. Yellow complete pass. You can see the wad stuck right there. And I'm assuming the lead is right underneath it. So that one's good to go. Same deal here. So this is just super tightly woven fibers, which is perfect for stopping big heavy things like that. Yeah, we're good. Okay, it is in there as well. These two move on. This one moves on. This one, you're out of there, buddy. Sorry about you. Listen, I know I kicked out green plate, but we're putting him back in just for a little pistol. I just wanna see if his plate will stop a nine. So we're gonna shoot all of them with a nine really quick and then go check them out. Let's see what we got. Also, uh, this is my OZ9 um, from Zevtech, and I put a Surefire X300 Ultra on it, and it looks freaking sick. Cool little gun. Yeah, I wanted to give this guy a second chance because this is really cool. Uh, it stopped that nine millimeter like nothing. So there's your hit right there. There's a little piece of bullet fragment, no deflection. So you made a level 3A plate, but if it lets a shotgun round through, it would let a rifle round through. We might as well test it too. We'll test it with a rifle round, but yeah, that one stopped easily. Nine millimeter on this, stopped easily. That's our hit right there, no problem. Nine mil on this one. Our nine millimeters right there. Went in there, yeah, you can see pieces of bullet fragment there in that dented metal, but did not go through. Stopped a nine. This one looks like it hit, oh yeah, it hit right there, and did not go through. Everything can stop a nine millimeter, so we have at least 
four level 3A plates. All right, now it is time for a rifle. This is a 5.56, this is a Steyr AUG. This will beat a level 3A plate. So let's see if these things are only level 3A or if they are more powerful than that. That was green, let's go black. Let's go yellow and white. I'm trying to put all these in different places so I'm not hitting the same hole every time. Let's go check it out. Green. Dead. That is a level 3A only plate. Black. Still alive. Where did I hit though? Right there. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That one, not even dented on the back yet. Black's still in it. That's impressive. It's gonna be impossible to find the hit. Oh, it's actually right there. That's my hit. Oh, not level three. And this was the non-hardened steel. This one is hardened steel. Our hit is right there. And it also came through. Oh, that's the bullet. Look at that, and it's hot. There's lead and copper there. It was caught in the putty in this. That's it right there. <laughs> that's a piece of the bullet. That, dude, that, it went through, but it didn't have any power. It stopped on this plastic right here. I think we call that a, a pass. It's not level three, because level three technically is a 308. It has to stop a 308. This is uh, not as powerful as a 308. So it's, it's a almost level three plate is what we'll call this. That's pretty impressive. That will stop a lot of rifle rounds, but not all of them. This is the only man standing left. Can't, can't talk. My talking's not good today. This is last man standing. And we're gonna call it level three because it looks like it stopped a five, five, six with no problem. So let's see if it's level four. Adam, yours is the only one left. But will it stop an M1 Garand firing black tips? These are 30-06 penetrator rounds. Uh, I'm gonna say it probably won't. And I'm gonna try to not chop my finger off here. I'm not a good uh, M1 Garand loader. Uh, I think it's gonna go through. But if it stops it, it means that is a level four plate. Also don't know where this thing shoots at close range. We'll find out. I saw a dirt move, either I missed him or it went straight through. So that is our hit right there and bullet went straight through. The black tip was like, I don't care about your stupid armor, you smarty pants, and it just went poof, poof, poof. Boom. Boom. Everybody's gonna be like, Matt, like, shoot the grand until it pings. I'm like, guys, you're just not getting a ping every time we show a grand, okay? Like, I don't wanna waste all that arm. There you go, you filthy animal. Here's what we're gonna do. I have to pick a winner now. This guy did stop the most, but his dimensions are the worst. It's the smallest covering the smallest area of vitals and it's the thickest, meaning it's gonna be in your way the most. So I think I'm not gonna award it to you. Even though you stopped the most, I like this one the most. It's bigger, it's thinner, and it did pretty good. It stopped a 5.56. Five, you, our fiber technician, are the winner and we're gonna send that thing to you. We'll reach out to you. So now I have a question for you guys, the militia watching. If you had to go into battle, would you choose the big, beefy M1 Grand 30-06, or would you choose the new fancy bullpup double mag tube 12 gauge? The battle is, um, there's 20 zombies coming to your house. You have unlimited ammo. Which one are you gonna choose to defend yourself? Thank you guys for watching this episode of the Most Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite
simple. There's only one rule in the demolition. You don't tell Mayor. <laughs>